Yeah. See, that's high, that high of ash, it must be green. Yeah. yeah. It must be within a few days of age. Oh, yeah. And you get the axe, uh, or you get a wedge and you hammer it in. Yeah. And you don't use a saw. Yeah, oh, you split right. it. You split it. Oh, two inch by two inch, oh, and yeah, they come yeah, out perfect. Right. And yeah. you begin to make your timber from that, yeah. and then you sand off oh, yeah, yeah, the sharp yeah, corners. Yeah. There's a fellow in a scarty that does turning with a kind of a uh, lead and a, and a sort of um, without electricity. You know, it's a real old fellow. Pedal, yeah, pedal. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I've Donald or something is his name. I have neighbours who do lathe turning down near Bantry. Oh yeah. Um, it's coming back. Well, I mean, oil. Oh, yeah, it's gone so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's in our time, it won't be there. Yeah, yeah. That's becoming, I think, quite clear at the moment. Now, is it is it two o'clock? It is. It is, uh, yeah. Four minutes past. Five past. Well, I think we put a sign out there. Yeah. And we're going on the upper wall. Yeah, yeah. And what we'll do is, I think, we'll, we'll, we'll go for the wall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I'll just watch yeah. I'll do a small introduction for those of us that have just joined, and I hope Katie and John don't find it all too boring. I hope not. But, but like, think of it this way. Um, there was a time there was no oxygen in the world. There was no green plants. And then the green plants began to arrive, starting with simple slime moles and algas. Yes. Do you know the algas yes. of the water? Mm -hmm. And then oxygen began to increase, and then life conditions were ready for us. And for the other higher plants, by higher plants I mean trees that can hold themselves up and feed up yes. through their veins and arteries up behind the bark. And then oxygen was brought to 20%. Would Kate know 20%? One fifth? Is that a bit much? John? John. One fifth? 20%? Can you imagine what that means? <laughs> five, five fingers, five. there's one fifth. Okay. <laughs> Think of five fingers and the Earth's atmosphere. Five things, well, one thumb, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> one finger is one fifth. That's four fifths, three fifths, two fifths, one fifth. But 20% is one part of five is oxygen. So that because of the trees, they maintain oxygen levels at, that, at, at 20%, at a level that we can exist. If there was any more oxygen, human life would finish up within a matter of years, we'd burn out. Mm. And if there was much more or less oxygen, it would be very difficult for us to think clearly. For example, now London last week was 14%. Oh, yeah. So how do you cross London in 14% oxygen? It's getting progressively difficult. In Japan and in China, on all the main streets, They've got little kiosks yeah. where every hundred or so meters you take oh, yeah. a yeah. breath of oxygen. Yeah. And it would double at the moment to 17%. So in other words, the message is that we've got to maintain oxygen levels and the trees do that. Yeah. Now, there's two schools of thought. Some say, let's keep planting trees. Yeah. Uh, and another school of thought that I belong to is well, let's not spend so much energy planting trees. Let's look after the trees we've got. Yeah. Let's look after those trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and leave them enough ground that they'll self-seed. Yeah. Do you follow yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a way of thinking that is going to have to come as climate gets warmer. You know, like New Orleans is long overdue. Dublin is happening. Cork mm. is happening. It's all going to happen in our time. I mean, there's too much pollution. And, uh, no, no, we're living in the next time. We're living in another global warming. I would say, er, hello, Derek. Trish. Yvonne, go with Eshkale. Excuse me. Um, I would say what brought most of us to Ireland if we check it all right back, be it through the Fitzwilliams or the Wentworths or the O'Burns or the O'Toole's, what brought us to this island, it got too hot in 
France and in Italy and in Spain. Now the next global warming has happened and it's getting too hot again. So now people are drifting further north again. Butterflies are a very good indicator species. We're now receiving butterflies in Clonakilty. Last year, three new dragonflies not seen before here since the Ice Age. It's getting so warm. So it's not so much pollution. As I said earlier at the first talk, um, pollution is an issue simply because it is beneath us to throw rubbish around, to turn Wicklow's Garden of Ireland into a landfill. I mean, there's a lot of hazardous landfill sites yeah. here. Water is turning up in wells or containing waste from uh, hospital theatres and universities. Yeah. You know, something seriously is going yeah, yeah. on here. Hello, John. Hi, Ted. Yeah. Hello, Hi. everyone. Do you want to take over, John? Um, so, when I, when, when I talk about uh, waters rising, I'm not so much thinking, when I'm, talk, when I'm thinking of New Orleans, I'm thinking of uh, glacial melt. There's more water not locked up in ice in our lifetime than in our great-grandfather's lifetime. Yeah. And that is why there's so much more water in the cycle. Yeah. The amount of water on Earth can never increase or decrease by one drop. It's fixed. Yeah. It's locked up in glaciers and ice caps. Yeah. But the warming is happening again. Now, what's causing the warming? That is another issue, Jerry. What's causing the warming? Insurance companies are saying it is not caused by human agency. You see, if it's caused by human agency, it's not an act of God. And there's no insurance cover if it's an act of God. It's a very legal issue. So at the moment, governments are very anxious to, to insist that we're not the cause of climate change, uh, that it is a natural phenomenon, or a na natural feature of the Earth's the Earth's evolution, the Earth's development. Um, something that we can do is we can alleviate the consequences by thinking native. And as I said earlier, that is something that the gentry did pass down to this generation. We think of all the wealth they took out. We talked of Wentworth earlier. I described him, the history book describes him as a man who had no favourites, he hated everyone. He hated Catholic and Protestant. He particularly hated Presbyterians. He was the Lord Viceroy of Ireland. He created the Culloden Estate. And then through him, the Rockinghams, and then through him, the Fitzwilliams. So the Fitzwilliams were the last family to live here. Uh, this afternoon's talk is about really woodland management and trying to find out what do we mean when Brian Cowan and Charlie McCreevy and Martin Cullen and Dick Roach talk of sustainable development? What does sustainable mean? We might just discover that today when we see how what the Fitzwilliams have left out of their 89,000 acre estate, there is 174 acres left intact. 89,000 acres of woodland, managed woodland, they didn't plant. This argument was all gone through in 1992. Bobby Malloy said, clear felt on the Fenog, it, it was planted. It's a cash crop. No, no, no. The gentry never planted. They managed what they found and they were going to now see how they managed the woodland and how they got maximum economic value, very important. I said earlier, we've got to stop looking at a tree and thinking of a chainsaw. But at the same time, if you don't manage the woodland, we'll, we'll have no living, we'll have no livelihood. We've got to manage the woodland too, we've got to do a thinning regimes and so forth. Socially, this is where we need to gather to recreate ourselves, socially. And of course, environmentally, Nature's highest achievement is the native woodland. So these are the places that when we decide that it's time to repair and mend the system, these are the places we're going to have to come for our lichens and our mosses and our insects 
our liver warts and our genetically sown stock of seeds. Do you follow that? Mm, yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now the Forest Service is planting a lot of French ash, Danish oak, Bosnian oak, Dutch sycamore. As it gets warmer in Ireland, we're going to discover that those trees who have seen 10,000 years of climate change and 10,000 years of disease and pest, they're going to survive. The Bosnian oak will not survive. <laughs> but this cannot be applied to humans. I warn everyone, Goebbels and Goring wrongly applied this to humans. White man must not breed with black man. Aryan must not breed with Celt. That was called eugenics. That's a whole other, that's a, that's a problem. When I see a black man on the street of Macroom, we have one black man in Macroom. <laughs> we have 600 Poles. But when I see a black man or a black woman, they've got the melanin that we have lost. We have the highest skin cancer in Europe, as you know, the Celtic race. So they are carrying something. We could send them all back to Ghana and Nigeria. We're sending, then we turn into an Easter Island. Then we do exhaust genetically ourselves. We haven't had new genetic stock really since the last major impregnation was the Cromwellian period. Most people here would have Cromwellian blood. Before that it was the Elizabethans, but of course everyone has French Norman blood. It's been a long time since. Look at Bushmills in County Antrim. Men, women and children look alike. They'll tell you that themselves. No, nothing new has been coming through the communities. Where I'm living, the last... We, we talked earlier that the J, Tom Nifanog, reminds us that the name of this wood is the, the colony of crows of the burial ground. Fanook means a J. And I'm just going to test someone here. Joe. <laughs> So give us a, no come on Joe. Put the sign up Joe. That's autumn yeah. leaves by the way, sign. not army. Put the sign up Joe, put the sign up. <laughs> okay, now earlier we said it was the Jays brought the oaks to Ireland. The Jays have a seven kilometre radius, exactly. And they brought the oak trees to Ireland across the land bridge of Land's End and of course Scotland. And this wood that we're going into, this area is Thumna for Oak, it's called off the Jays. I thought it wasn't the end. The, the, the strongest, largest jay colony in the island, I believe, is in the Old Fitzwilliam estate. And that tells us that the jays are waiting to bring oaks back out into the countryside along the hedgerows. But the hedgerows have been taken out. I'll remind you of something, and I'll just, can we walk as I walk, as I talk? I'll just remind you of something I heard, was it 1972? And was it T.J. Marr? in response to the beginnings of the Northern Troubles. He said, we'd have our six counties, let them go to hell. Quote, I think it's quoted, let them go to hell. We'll have our own six counties if we bulldozed every hedgerow and tree in our little state. That was the thinking in the 70s. Don't mind them, let them fight it out. Just blow away the hedgerows and you already have so many more hundreds of acres. Uh, in fact, thousands and thousands of acres of extra land. But Cynthia, as a farmer, would you appreciate that if you remove the hedgerows, would, do you know the value of a hedgerow? We know the value of a hedgerow, yes, we haven't got them down. But you haven't blown, you haven't bulldozed them? No. Very good. Last year we lost 200,000 cattle in the start. 200,000 cattle. Nothing says you. Okay, that's out of 8 million. What's 200,000? Most of those died of sunstroke. We can't get Chagas, in fact, to tell us that fact. But the Frisians and the Blondies and the Limousines and the Cementals, they haven't the skull. But do you know what cattle do have the skull for the new emerging conditions? Do we know any Irish cattle? Where's the Kerries, mm -hmm. the Drimmons, the Bow the Rowans, mm -hmm. the Shorthorns. 
they have a skull as thick as any politician has. <laughs> now, oh, oh God, I hope there's no politician. <laughs> right, okay. And I'm not attacking either fine fail or fine jail. Right, will we, will we go, Jerry? Please.